Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, today we are going to be talking to Austin Esebor, who is a consultant, an SEO consultant, and also a host of his own podcast, Democratizing SEO, where he talks to other SEOs about different topics. Today we are going to be speaking about uh, SGE. Um, so Austin is going to be talking to us about about that and giving us a, a few thoughts and a few tips as to how to handle better this situation, this new situation for all of us, uh, which is a <laughs> yep. very, very interesting way <laughs> to de- <laughs> for things to develop. <laughs> Hello, Austin. How are you? Hey, Mons. Very well, thanks. Thank you so much for, for having me. No, thank you so much for joining. Um, first of all, I, it would be very, very good uh, to know what ST, what what is it? How would you define it to somebody who is uh, really uh, hearing this for the first time? So, search generative experience. It's um, think of it as a new way of browsing on the SERPs. It's uh-huh. faster. Uh, I think this is a key element of um, of, of it. It allows users to essentially find what they're seeking in a much more, I would say, efficient way. Now, it uses AI to essentially help the searcher to do part of the research for them. So they don't have to do Mm. the lengthy, typical research that you get with the, the 10 blue links where you search for something browse websites go back into google search for something else um, let's say like an advanced um uh, an additional step to your search and move along to your journey that way so it's a it's a new search experience and do you think it's going to be or is it already being um, useful to users or is it more just something new let's try it out etc etc (laughs) <laughs> so right now it's in uh, beta mode in the US. It hasn't rolled out to the UK uh, just yet. Yeah. Um, at the moment, people are using it, and it's almost like an option um, for for users in, in 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 that are testing it out. The rollout of it is not yet confirmed. My suspicion will be it could be as early as a few months' time. Think October mm-hmm. um, time. Um, more, more likely in a year's time. That's what I'm thinking. I think Google's using the beta mode to test all the kinks, iron things out, and then they're aiming to, to roll it out. Um, but actually, before the rollout, I think the beta mode will be pushed out to other uh, locations, and then eventually it'll be, it'll be rolled out. Um, that sounds very early, isn't it? <laughs> so we need to. Um, my my guess is that we need to gather as much information as possible from the users, uh, from people who are already testing it out. Any thoughts from um, any other SEOs who are able to actually use it to see what the impressions are? Um, it looks like a very very interesting way of browsing, input. I I just don't know what is the um, the effects that is going to have in our SEO strategy. Oh, it's, I think it's going to change everything that we do in terms of SEO. Um, the entire landscape is changing. So it's not just the SERPs that are changing. It's also um, the way Google wants to serve their users that are changing. Now, remember, Google's mm-hmm. users are our users that we're trying to acquire from Google. And also, users' expectations are also changing. My... Okay. theory behind why they're releasing this in the first place is to do with I believe that Google are battling with uh, social media platforms essentially there are the okay. search elements on the search element on social media platforms is seeing an increase and Google's looking at this and saying this could be a major threat to our uh, market share so they've had to do something to satisfy what users expect more from what they expect with social media uh, platforms the way they browse on social media pl- on platforms so i believe this is um mm. this is one of the reasons why they're, they're pushing this out also ai is a big factor specifically yeah. chat gpt is a huge factor uh, so all of this is leading into uh, a new experience for 
Google's users. Yeah. My my concern about that, if I may, is that um, social media is a different platform. Or social media platforms are very different from a browser, from a from a search engine. Mm -hmm. We will never be using it in a similar way because that's the reason why we've got Instagram or we've got um, any other social media platforms. So I just I, I this poses the question: How can we actually can we can we actually um, handle the situation? Perhaps optimizing images, really optimizing images, because um, half of the work that I find uh, that I come across during my consulting time is uh, is to do with images. Uh, a lot of the times images are not optimized properly or not optimized at all. Mm -hmm. So I wonder whether that is one way we can actually handle this uh, different way uh, well, of search. Images is one aspect, uh, but I think that's a small aspect compared to the overall um, big scheme of things. The way search is going to yeah. serve users is changing. So Google themselves have said they're moving from um, um, strings to things, right? Entities. Now, the reason why okay. I say they're looking at social media as a threat is because social media, they focus on strings. Google historically have never been about um, things. They've always been about strings. So they find information, their information retrieval process, crawling, indexing, uh -huh. etc. That is them finding information. Whereas on social media platforms, they receive information. So users on social media, they input their information. That is essentially us giving those platforms all the data set that they need, right? rather than what Google, um, the, the approach that Google uses, is, which is them um, seeking information. Now, in a world where a lot of people are looking for um, information, but information based, from, based on what um, entities have, i.e. creators, i.e. brands, this is the, if you like, the new way of searching. People aren't just interested in, I don't know, let's think of a keyword. Um, things to do in London during the summer, mm -hmm. right? They specifically want a better way of navigating this um, information retrieval in order for them to be satisfied with their query. So they look for, if you like, known entities which they can trust. This ties in very nicely with why Google added their new um, E in their EEAT, in that they want to, mm -hmm. users are expecting um, experiences from other users. That is a better way for them to search. So they think of entities first and then the topic, let's say. and social media platforms handle this very well think of tiktok hmm. if you're searching for yeah. tiktok if you're searching for something on tiktok and mind you people uh, do search for things on on tiktok and tiktok actively promotes people to search uh, for for things they search for a if they search for a topic they first have to find a topic via a creator which is an entity a brand is a form of hmm. an entity and that is how all social media platforms work so it's the inverse of what of the way google works and google is looking at this and saying okay if social media platforms tiktok are providing users with information in this manner and users are preferring mm. it this is something that could be a massive threat for us down the line so they have to do something to change yeah. the way they um they they serve the users now, when I say serve users, I'm thinking of the um, younger generation, so Gen Z mm -hmm. and Gen Alpha. Google do not have them unlocked as well as they have um, other generations. And this is what I think mm -hmm. they're, they're concerned about. Because if they don't, you know, the tr traditional saying, if you don't have the youth, then you're, you're going to... <laughs> Uh, lose market share it's almost inevitable yeah so you're saying that they are looking perhaps at they are um, 
future survival as a company uh, mid yeah. long term. Absolutely. That, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's basically makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, and this is a very important distinction how we actually search uh, the, 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 the point that you make, first the topic and then everything else. Uh, and so I think the role, this is where the role of content creators actually comes into play. And it is very, very important to consider what they are saying. Even if, 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 if it's just videos about cats, for example, or <laughs> people having breakfast, as I have seen, et cetera, et cetera. It's very important that there are, that we actually consider the role in the future of search, to be honest. Um, but do you think, do you think that the, uh, the, uh, the SGE will actually be able to handle complex uh, queries? That, because that is my concern. I mean, the reason why I mentioned earlier um, images is because all that I can think about SGE is mostly <laughs> images. Images, right? right. Yeah. So yeah. What, what about more complex queries? If I, if I want to find out more about, say, skin cancer, uh, just to give you a very extreme example, I would like to find a patient having skin cancer. I would like to find information mm -hmm. about that. Yep, this is part of um, why SGE, SGE is being rolled out. So it handles complex uh, queries. Uh, so let's say skin cancer uh, for, actually, <laughs> that's a bit of a morbid <laughs> query. Let me think of something more palatable. Um, <laughs> let's say if I'm looking for a phone okay classic example right I'm looking for mm -hmm. what's a better phone for someone to video blog iPhone or Samsung right that's mm -hmm. a cascade of questions right there that's like three questions so better phone like sort of uh, signifies you're looking for the best phone right so that's one query Okay. Um, what else? A, a video phone for uh, sorry, a phone for video blogging, right? That's another query, right? Not all phones is ideal for video blogging, so that's something to consider. So that's a secondary query, and then the third query is comparing uh, iPhone versus Samsung, right? So you have three sets of queries mm. in that one query string alone. Historically, you would carry out the research separately, right? SGE aims to do all of that for you and arrive at the okay. answer to all of the questions all in one. So it's this is why I say it's a faster experience. It's saving users time, right? Instead of them carrying out all this research and as Google calls it, the, 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 the heavy lifting of research, they handle all of that for you and present to you what they think is the best answer to your queries i say it's what they think because you know they're a machine <laughs> you know they use your information <laughs> your data set everything they know about you and present uh, uh -huh. what they think is best for you uh, based on the query that you want as well as the other information that they have about you now for marketers for seos we have a dilemma that we'll have to uh, uh, figure out because my thinking around this is if Google's looking for if Google's looking to have the best information to serve their users and they're looking to change the way they gather information from a retrieval uh, uh, base to a more um, brand or entity uh, based approach that means we as marketers as seos will need to ensure that every brand that we work on provides this information as clearly and concisely to google as as possible and i say brand because brand is a, a type of entity we'll have to consider this for all entities yeah. brand is the most important entity the mm -hmm. approach that we'll have to adopt will be to focus on entities beginning with the brand and ensuring that google uh -huh. knows the facts about the brand the more google knows about a brand the better they'll be, they'll be able to serve users with with the brand as a recommendation and remember the left hand rail the 10 blue links the traditional yeah. seo that we all know of it's 
simply Google's recommendations, right? But they're moving mm -hmm. away from that approach of serving users. They're using a more dynamic approach to serve, to satisfy their users. It's a lot more uh, comprehensive now. And in order for them to make a recommendation, they first have to know the entity as well as well as they can do, which begins with the brand. So from a marketing point of view, from an SEO point of view, I think we'll have to focus on ensuring that we say to Google, this brand does this for this audience, being very, very mm -hmm. clear. There shouldn't be any um, um, ambiguity about it. Um, so a brand, this brand, we service this um, um, subset of your users, Google's users, which again are who we're trying uh -huh. to acquire with SEO, right? That's the whole point of um, organic uh, traffic. And we do this for the, for, the, for the users. And the clearer we have this, beginning with the brand, the better we'll be able to be uh, shown within, if you like, the SGE spear. So what seems to me is that our content strategy needs to be spot on from now onwards and um, also that and recognizing the, the, uh, uh, the user's journey uh, and how users interact with our brand more than ever before. So I was having this discussion a few days ago about um, top funnel, top funnel queries it seems to me like SGE is going to answer all those, all those top funnel <laughs> queries. Mm -hmm. um, at least generally speaking, I mean, we would have to, to wait and see it because maybe in the financial sector it's not the same. But um, we could actually generally say that perhaps we need to focus more on mid to lower funnel. Um, would, would you th do you think it's, um, it's fair to say that, at least initially? <laughs> Definitely, the bottom funnel keywords are going to be uh, significantly more valuable. Now, this there's a um, pros and cons to this, right? The con, of course, is that top Gosh. funnel keywords we're going to see less clicks from there, from them. If hmm. um, Google, if users uh, are searching for top funnel uh, keywords, from Google's point of view, they don't necessarily need to to take users to websites in order for the users to be satisfied, right? So this again uh -huh. is why SGE is um, being pushed out because they want to service users and have any and all information on the SERPs itself, right? So that users don't have to do the, the, tra the traditional uh, research, if you like, dance of going to website after website uh -huh narrowing their yeah. um, research and then uh, going for the bottom um, uh, level keywords. So that's the bad, the bad side. We'll have to, that's the negative. We'll have to be fine with seeing less clicks from top level keywords. However, hmm. because you, so, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> no, I was thinking about zero clicks uh, searches as well. I think we are going in that, we keep going in yeah. this direction. Absolutely, yeah. It's not new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to see an increase in that uh, significantly. That increase, I believe, will lead to more of an increase on low, um, bottom funnel keywords. Um, I think we're going to see a high demand on bottom level key, um, keywords because essentially users are now um, carrying out their research faster, quicker right and mm. this allows them to arrive at the bottom funnel keywords um, a lot sooner than they would than they would have um, and p potentially within a shorter space of uh, time as in once they start their mm. search journey they can go from one uh, they can go from top level keywords down to bottom level keywords within that same journey sitting so that's going to be very right. interesting and I think the demand around bottom level keywords is going to increase, particularly particularly with brand-led uh, search. This is why I say brand is going to be the most important. Think of also, to add to this mix of um, exciting, comprehensive, 
um, search experience we're going to uh, be showing in the months and years to come. We have AI. We have Bard. Mm -hmm. In theory, Google have enough data. Over the 25 years they've been around, they've collected enough data to be able to essentially serve their users with information that they think their users want. This is what Bard is about. They yeah. curate content, right? So in theory, this is something mm -hmm. that Google can do already. The value, I believe, will be around the brands that is providing the information to users. So what is the best brand for me as a user when I search for a topic? That is why branding is going to be more than ever most, most important in SEO. Well, I think it is going to be very different in the uh, various markets around the world. Do you have any thoughts on that? Huh. I, I, that's I a do. Different it's, one. Sorry. It's, it's, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's okay. It's slightly early to say just yet, but I think the experiences yeah. across markets would differ based on the maturity of Google within that market. So Google US, yeah. very, um, uh, so very mature markets compared to mm -hmm. uh, Latvia, for example, right? So and this is why I think Google specifically have SGE launched in the US first, because that's their most, that's their, um, the, if you like, quote unquote, richest market where they have the most amount of data that they can uh, use and iterate and then funnel that to mm -hmm. other markets. So I think this would be, uh, this would be one of those situations where um, we're seeing great results as users. We're seeing great use results using SGE in the States in European in markets within European um, within Europe that are more mature than less mature markets i.e. markets where Google don't necessarily have a uh, stronghold or strong footing um, as compared with the, the, the US market yeah, or there are simply things, um, aspects in Google that are perhaps launched in uh, .com or .co.uk, for example, but they are not launched yet into .dk or yep. .it, for example, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Uh, we know that takes time, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it used to happen first in the in Australia and um, and uh, the US market, and then it would actually funnel down to other markets, as you say. Yeah. But it would actually take a lot longer to. Yeah. Um, uh, for us to, to have those those yeah. um, those aspects, those this is functionalities, why, right? Uh, absolutely. And th this is why I think the uh, one why they have it currently as an option, SGE as an option. So it's a so a button you you um, uh, tick to en enable it. And two, uh -huh. I think it's a, it's also going to change based on. Um, Google's knowledge of the queries that you're of want queries. So Does when that? you have a query around, let's say iPhone or Apple, then SGE mm -hmm. is going to be very prominent as the main feature in the SERPs. For less known queries, you're going to have the 10 blue links, the traditional 10 blue links. And eventually, I think the option to enable and disable SGE I think by default is going to be enabled and mm -hmm. what changes yeah. is going to be based on the, the, the query, whether or not you see SGE or the, the traditional 10 blue links. I do think that the 10 blue links, the goal of Google is to eventually fade all of that out, but that's way, way down the line. <laughs> I think it's going to be really interesting how we can perhaps compare um, in between um, amongst the uh, uh, different sectors, industry sectors, mm -hmm. to see how the financial sector compares to publishing or compares to um, any other sector around the world. I'm just looking forward to all that. So uh, what do you think, uh, what are your best three tips for brands to, uh, to do uh, to, to get ready for this? Okay, so 
I think as a um, industry uh, or community, SEOs, we have to mm -hmm. switch our thinking from um, looking at um, uh, strings, the, t the traditional way of um, optimizing for um, traffic, to considering things, uh -huh. specifically entities, uh -huh. even more specifically starting with the brand that we're working on. That is the key to everything. The brand has to be central to everything that we carry out. Once we have that, I would say optimize um, entity optimization. It's a, it's a broad subject and probably um, it extends the scope of this con this conversation. But essentially, optimizing mm -hmm. for entities, uh, you want to have uh, three things. So, uh, establish what the entity is, what the mm -hmm. entity does, and which audience the entity serves. Now, remember, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the audience that we as marketers, as SEOs are going after are Google's audience. So if we can nail mm. down precisely who our audience is based on our entity, then Google will be, bit, will be better able to match what we do with the audience that are seeking what we do or service or product, mm. you know, what have you. Um, but b b prior to that, it's a matter of knowing what the brand is. That has to be very clear to Google. Uh, and I say brand as an example of an entity. This will be have this will have uh -huh. to be across all entities we target. The traditional way of thinking of keywords. I think those are We're moving away from that. <laughs> yeah, big time. Yeah. It's if, if you think of a keyword as a if a keyword is an entity, then mm -hmm. that is the focus. But using keywords and like focusing on keywords, clusters of keywords, those traditional ways are, are, are we're quickly moving away from those. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, just to end this uh, this episode, what are your three? Uh, favorite books or movies that you would recommend to any of us just to kind of switch off from search generative experience from uh, brand building etc etc <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so books one that comes to mind is oh, and I forget the name of it now but I think it was something around I think it's called the fundamentals of brand SERP um, optimization is by Jason Bernard, who's like the godfather of oh, uh, yeah. um, 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 brand SERP optimization, right? So Brands that I would say is a must read for all SEOs. And two other books w uh, that I would suggest is, um, of course, Eli um, Swartz's book, um, Product Led SEO. Or movies. <laughs> or movies, okay. So uh -huh. movies, yeah, it's a good one. you know, Arrival is the one that comes to mind right now. Um, I think it's because I I saw the trailers for Dune, uh, Dune Part Two, and I thought of the right. di the director and thought of the movie Arrival, which is a fascinating movie. Uh, so I would say Arrival. Um, mm -hmm. That's the only one that comes to mind right now. So I, I'll have that as the third recommendation, <laughs> <laughs> along with the with the other two books. <laughs> that's that's perfect. Thank you so much. We we all need to kind of switch off from time to time to actually get more ideas in our mind, to gather ideas, gather our thoughts as to how to approach these um, these new aspects like um, um, SGE, which we are um, having to deal with very, very soon um, across, uh, across the rest of the world, not just the US. So um, this is the end of the episode. Thank you so much, Austin, for all your thoughts. Thank you. And, Pleasure. Uh, where, no, no, uh, where, where can our um, listeners uh, find you? So I'm on uh, YouTube. I my podcast is Democratizing SEO. Uh, so check me out on there, mm -hmm. and uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. I am not very active on most social uh, media platforms, but LinkedIn is my jam. So 
YouTube and LinkedIn. <laughs> All right, so everyone, uh, just go and check Austin SSEPO on LinkedIn and on Democratizing SEO on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you for your time. It's been, it's been a pleasure.